Hey guys. All right. So I'm going to have to do this for now on, at least for the time being, going to have to submit videos for you guys to watch for class. Um, I know it's a little awkward. I just keep getting quarantined. The, the honest truth of it is that I don't, um, normally in the past, I suffer from mild fevers, cough, sore throat pretty frequently due to these bad boys here and these guys here and a couple of other pills that I have to take just to keep my kidney from being rejected, Santa rejection medication. And these things are, you know, normally I just kind of ignore it and go to work if I'm running a mild fever or what have you. But with the corona threat, I'm quarantined so much. So that is the situation we're in right now. I apologize, um, but given that we've got an essay to get to, I need to get you guys on this essay. So we're going to move forward. We're doing it by video. I am strictly forbidden from hosting class or being in office hours or doing any sort of live work from home. I'm not sure exactly why. Uh, it has something to do with the way uh, uplift, handles, substitutes, things like that. But I've been told specifically, do not work from home though I can go ahead and do this flip classroom thing, which is actually kind of tougher than working from home. But at any rate, this is what we're dealing with. So that out of the way, let's get to what we need to do. So one of the things uh, I wanted to discuss, let me pull it up here. One of the things I want to discuss is uh, I went to grade your topics uh, or your, your um, where you had to watch the video, ask a question, cite which topic you were interested in, and then ask a question about that topic. I think I made a mistake in the uh, layout of the exemplar, it was there, my topic question was there, but it, it wasn't separated where it was really easy to see. And I think a lot of you guys are just in the habit of looking at my exemplars and going from there instead of reading all the instructions. So I'm gonna say over half of the submissions for that assignment, for that uh, asking the questions assignment, did not have a question about the topic. Some did, some didn't. So as I was grading, I was like, man, I'm gonna have to give all these things redos. I started, I gave a couple of hundred even though I didn't answer that second question, but I decided, you know what? I really want those questions asked before we delve into those topics next week. So um, I want you to redo those assignments. If you didn't ask a question uh, on that assignment, go ahead and do a resubmission. This assignment that I'm laying out now, super simple. So go ahead and go back to the old assignment and re-upload a submission that includes a question about the topic. I've also fixed my exemplar to show you that there needs to be a question about the chosen topic. So look at that, make yours look like mine, ask a question about the topic that you chose. And then I, that helps me know, I, I, it's for a reason, it helps me know what I need to address when I talk about those topics next week. So get that done. Almost, most of you, actually all of you need to go check and make sure you did that and then uh, if you didn't upload that question, do a, do a resubmit with that question asked. Otherwise, they're going to be redos. I don't want to give out that many redos right now to all my on-path students, but I will if I have to. So do the complete assignment. Okay, done with that. Let's talk about um, manage back submissions. I haven't been able to get to those because at home, I'm having trouble accessing manage back. So that's going to have to wait until I get back to campus, unfortunately. Um, it's all right. There, I, we're not going to miss a deadline or anything with it. I'm glad those of you who have finished your manage back uploads have done so. This gives others time to do it. I know that I still have people who have not finished their uh, PPD, presentation planning document. You've not finished your PPD yet. So I don't care if you do it late, do it, get it done. I haven't even looked at them yet because I can't from home. So as soon as I get back to work, I'll do that. So what are we doing for this assignment? Two things, we're gonna talk about shared knowledge and we're gonna take a look at the rubric. So let's take a look at shared knowledge and then we're gonna take a look at the rubric. Your assignment's gonna be to give an example of shared knowledge, give an example of personal knowledge, and then also, um, that's it. So I, I want you to I want you to look at the so we do the rubric first, and then we'll do shared knowledge, personal knowledge. So, but we're going to live by this rubric. So let me share my screen. Here's the rubric. Boom. So hopefully, you guys can all see this rubric. I'm going to zoom in right there. All right. So this bottom just gives you some characteristics, but we don't care about that. We care about this top part. 
And really, we're going to take a look. The easiest way to do this is start in the middle. We're going to take a look at level three. You get a level three, you pass. And if you see, there are two aspects or two criteria that you're going to be graded on. So you can get a level three in one and level three in the other. You can get a four in one and two in the other that's still passing. You can get two fours, whatever, but you're going to be graded on two things instead of just one like the presentation was. So you're going to be graded on the quality of analysis of knowledge questions and the keywords on that are arguments, examples, counterclaims. And you're also going to be great at understanding the knowledge questions. So you're going to need to create knowledge questions that are connected to the prescribed title. We'll get more into that as we go forward, as we discuss those titles in detail. And you're going to have to develop and link to the areas of knowledge and or ways of knowing. Well, your areas of knowledge, you get to pick. You got to pick two of them, remember? And then your ways of knowing uh, you just need to mention the ways of knowing that you're using as you go through and write this thing. Um, you should know these by now. If not, go grab a cheat sheet online, eight ways of knowing it airs in knowledge. Um, Cause I know you don't have them hanging up in the classroom anymore. All right. So let's talk about this first one, understanding knowledge questions. Uh, there's a focus on some knowledge questions. So you're going to take a topic, whatever your prescribed titles is, uh, do statistics can conceal as much as they reveal a good knowledge question can be, um, uh, what are, why would somebody want to conceal the truth? Why do humans feel the need to conceal the truth, right? That could be a knowledge question dealing with that. That's, that's not the best one, but that could be one. Um, another one could be, um, can anything ever be fully revealed, right? To what extent can something be revealed, can be said to be revealed. At what point is something considered revealed? These are all ways to talk about that aspect of that topic. So you need to develop some knowledge questions centered around your chosen topic. Um, and then you need to answer those knowledge questions as you explore the topic. We'll get more into detail about that. But um, they want to see knowledge questions that are connected to the topic. They want to see development uh, of your areas of knowledge. You, you need to be using these area of knowledge, as I said. So if you pick uh, natural science and art, you better be using natural science and art in your arguments, which comes down to here. So your arguments need to be clear and supported. No longer will unclear arguments get you a level three. These, because in the presentation, you're given a little leeway to be kind of unclear. So three is fairly easy to get. Here, you need to reread and reread your arguments to make sure they are super clear. Give them to friends, let your friends read them, make sure everything's super clear. If you don't do that, uh, you're probably not passing TOK. The, and then they need to be supported by examples. If you lack examples, you fail. And these examples need to be real life situations, preferably. And then you're going to have some counterclaims that you at least identify. If you do better, you're going to explore them, right? Um, but you need to at least have counterclaims. And luckily for you, you have a decent understanding of counterclaims because we did that in our presentation. So this is your first, for many of you, your first looking at the rubric. We'll talk more in depth on this as we go along, but I want you to be introduced. So the key points of the rubric, just to review, you need knowledge questions that you have to create. That's the hard part. You need to, of course, use your areas of knowledge, which that's part of the topic. It says two areas of knowledge, use them. You need to at least give some lip service, talk about how you're using ways of knowing in your analysis, like using reason. As we can see, uh, whenever, whenever listening to this, that, or the other, these are all ways of knowing, right? Listening, seeing, reason, right? Uh, you need to mention those things by name. Then uh, the second, that'll get you your three there. And then your second thing, you need to have clear arguments. That's so important that they're clear. Uh, you must have examples or else you're getting that two. And then that two is bad news. Um, and then you need to have counterclaims, which should be easy peasy for you guys now. And so you should at least have a counterclaim for each one of your uh, areas of knowledge. See, it says examples with an S, counterclaims with an S means you need more than one of each. Having one counterclaim per area of knowledge, having one example per area of knowledge will get you the three. Done. Now, let's go on to what this assignment is. This assignment is to discuss shared and personal knowledge. And we'll come back to that rubric again and again, and I'm going to link it in the Schoology. So going forward, you'll always have that rubric with you the same way we do with the presentation. 
All right, so let me share my screen again for shared and personal knowledge. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do a whiteboard for this and then I'll share this picture I have. So whiteboard, share. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna check the video when I'm done. All right, so shared knowledge. A lot of people use this diagram. I'm gonna use it to the idea of like a circle and in it you have shared knowledge and let's talk about it. So let's say we're talking about shared knowledge of uh, uniform policy at peak. Well, the people who make the uniform policy have come together. I'm part of it. We came together as a group to discuss, to decide what's best, what's worse. So for me, actually, you know what? I've got text. Let me do that. For Bruce, if we're talking about peaks, peaks uniform policy, Mr. Bruce is going to be dead center because I helped develop it along with other people. We shared this. We shared this together. So Shirtle was there. Let me spell his name properly, hopefully. Uh, also, there was Miss Rocha and many others. So together, we came and developed the uniform policy. We, 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 we redid it a few years ago. So we came together, put that together, and that all that stuff was shared with us. Now, you're a student. The knowledge of the uniform policy is also shared with you. Now, you weren't in the creation of it, but you are still part of it. It's, it's shared together with us. We make it. It's also shared with you because you come here and you are part of this whole shared knowledge. We all understand about what to wear and what not to wear. So a student is also part of this. Boom. However, I don't know what it feels like for you in particular, you in particular, to um, – wear that uniform how on your skin does that skirt or pair of pants feel to you don't know and neither does anybody else really so the feel of the uniform if you hear a noise in the background i'm sorry it's my cat you know that's on the scratchy thing the feel of the uniform is very very much personal, isolated from this shared knowledge. So that's personal for the student. So the feel of the uniform is very much personal. So many of you are probably thinking, so what knowledge is personal? Very little. Most things are shared. Yeah, because we're a communal species. Most things are shared, right? Um, once you tell somebody how it feels, you've kind of shared it. Is it a super shared knowledge? Do they know as well? No, it's still mostly personal, but they know something about it, right? They don't live it, right? Just as this knowledge is more shared among those who create it than those who had take part in it, but it's still shared. You can still comment on it. You can still petition for change. You can complain and make changes, which is why we revisited the uniform policy, all that stuff. So, you know, it's kind of in the middle there, but it's not a hard and fast rule. So science, is science shared or personal? Well, if you're talking about, let's say geology, study of rocks and, and minerals and the earth, well, that study is definitely shared knowledge among scientists who experiment, create peer-reviewed journals, teach, do lab work, all that, go out and do field work. That's all very much shared knowledge. They share with each other. They test each other's work. However, my son just grabbed rocks from outside to examine for his school, for his little lab project. And he saw if they floated. He saw it, what certain things did to him when he scratched them. This is all his personal knowledge because he hasn't shared it yet. It's still personal to him right now, mostly. I mean, his teacher told him to go do it. His teacher told him what to do. So it's kind of shared, but a lot of it's still more on that personal level. So it's a, like a sliding scale. But most knowledge you're gonna deal with in your areas of knowledge is gonna be shared for this. But you need to know these terms because they expect you to use the terms shared and personal knowledge in your essay. So as you're writing, you want to write, make sure that you're clear that whatever topic you choose, what part of it is 
um, shared what part of his personal. So going back to that topic of statistics conceal versus reveal, there's an aspect of shared versus personal because if you take somebody who doesn't know statistics and they look at statistics, they're inclined to trust what somebody else says after looking at them, right? A mathematician, an expert looking at them and take that shared knowledge to heart. But a statistician, right, looking at them might be able to look at it and gain some personal knowledge that isn't shared. Like, hey, did you notice this? Did you notice this? They didn't notice that. I did. And now there's an aspect of personal knowledge. So to what extent does some, must somebody who is uninitiated into the realm of statistics rely on the commonly shared knowledge of statistics? And to what extent does that conceal things from that person because they cannot gain personal knowledge of it because they're not trained in statistics? So that's, that's just an example of where that idea of shared versus personal knowledge will come into play in this essay. And I hope to touch on shared and personal knowledge for all six of the topics whenever I break them down specifically but you need to know this. So let me pull up this last thing and then I'm gonna let you go. Let me share this right here. I'm gonna put this, this is a nice little image made by somebody, um, but it is teacher steal all the time. So I stole this. I'm dropping it in the Schoology assignment as well. Uh, just so you know, it, it essentially said what I said, it goes into a little more detail take a gander at it. If ever you want a cheat sheet on personal versus shared knowledge, I hope you come back to this as you write your essay. All right. So once again, rubric will be in the Schoology. That um, Venn diagram will be in the Schoology as well. You notice they overlap because some knowledge is kind of in between. It's a sliding scale. Okay. So what are you doing for your assignment? Again, you are going to give an example of personal knowledge and give an example of shared knowledge. And I'll put my example using the uniform thing uh, in my exemplar in the assignment. Write that out. Easy 100. Also reminder, go back to your last assignment. If you didn't ask that question about the topic, you need to do that so you don't get a redo. I stopped grading them. I didn't want to give out redos. I will pick up grading them. Uh, probably this weekend, so I give, so everybody has a chance to see me go, hey, you don't want redos, let's get this done. All right, that's it. Uh, I'm sorry I can't be there. I am quarantined because of the reasons I explained before. I would love to be there. I'm going to see my doctor soon, and hopefully he can give me a pass to come to school, even though I'm suffering from these sort of immunosuppressant uh, symptoms. That's it, I hope to see you soon. Good. Keep up with the work. That'll mean you're keeping up with the essay, and everything will be good. Okay. See you, kids.